No, no, I don't. For the simple reason, I've already told my children that the, if they drive past and there's a stack of flies flying around the house, it's more than likely I'm dead inside. But I, I'm, I'm not worried. When, it, when it's time for me to go, I'll go. I don't really want to be saved. Thank you very much for your concern. Thank you. I can't bloody wait. I think they've got it better than us over on the other side. Mediums give you a sense of comfort that the person over there is watching over you, that they haven't left you, they've got there safely. The medium's like the conduit that gives you the message or the validation that they're with you. I think whether you're sceptical or you're a believer, everyone wonders what happens to us when we leave this world. I think people don't realise that they've probably got 50 spirits in the house at any time because loved ones in spirit follow you. Psychic mediums are curious creatures. They believe they can see things the rest of us can't and deliver messages from the dead. And in Australia, they're on the rise. Some think they prey on people for their own financial gain. Are psychics doing more harm than good? I wanted to find out, and I'm beginning here at the Australian Psychic of the Year Awards in Sydney, where the competition is fierce. Well, look, I already do psychic TV here in Australia. I've got my own Skype show live across the UK, um, live streaming once a week. Um, I do, I work professionally as a medium. I had celebrities all the time, OK? I've done uh, Don Lane, Jeannie Little, Malcolm Turnbull. And it's just, it's really nice to be acknowledged in your field of, you know, in your craft, to, you know, just be recognised for your good work. It's wonderful. The winner of the Psychic of the Year Award won't take home cash, but kudos, something every psychic desires. 2014 Psychic People's Choice Award, Lawrence King. It's like in our profession, being an actor and getting an Oscar. I decided to follow the winner, Florence King, during the biggest year her career has ever seen. Now she's won the award, she's doing all she can to capitalise on the extra exposure. Tomorrow morning, Melbourne. So we've got a retreat and a show down in Melbourne. So doing a national tour, all the capital cities except Darwin. Nobody booked me in for Darwin. And you go on Facebook and you say you're going somewhere and honestly, people follow you. It's fantastic. So I'm getting, I'm not so much of a fossil, I'm getting with the times and it's wonderful. I'm living the dream, it could all end tomorrow. So, you know, maybe nobody wants to hire me after tomorrow. So I'm taking it all. <laughs> For the past eight years, Florence has made her living communicating with the dead, and the messages can come at any moment. If I'm hanging the washing, I'll get a lot of information, because that's quiet time. You've got quite a load and you'll be hanging it, and I'll get a lot of information, especially if I'm doing a show that night, so that's really good. But when I come back in, I'm answering the phone, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing that, they're like, they put their hands up in the air, and like, no, he's talking to her now. <laughs> I wouldn't say I didn't believe her, but I was, I was sort of scared, I guess you could say, that sort of side, because I thought, you know, um, it's mum. She can't. She can't talk to all these dead people and you know, stuff like that. But Florence isn't phased. This year, she's working towards her biggest performance yet, her very own solo show. As I said, if they saw the preparation that goes into a show, it's definitely not preening yourself all day. It's like, oh, I better put some makeup on, make my head look good. It's, oh, but I've only got five minutes, you know. And you're running around having your life. Any small business relies on regular customers. I decide to meet with Florence's clients and find out why people seek her services. Society expects you to think, oh, get over it now, it's been years or it's been months, you know, and it's like, no, I'll never get over it. It's part of my life that's... I won't be the same person I was because Mum died. I guess my first time, one of my first times was with Florence. So the first time it's like you want to be open and not expect that the person you want to come to will come to. Florence was a lot of validation with Mum, initially. Somehow you keep going, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how I do it, but I'm here. I know I do it because of Tita, my dog. I 
I have the utmost respect for Florence King and what she does. Margaret was my wife of just on 61 years. I have never met a woman the calibre of her. Well, I've had a number of past lives. I was an assistant, as well as being a slave, to Ramesses II. I was crucified as a witch, a male witch, in 1692, and they are all part and parcel of what I am today. As well as one-on-one -on -one private consultations, Florence also performs group readings. Tonight is the first time I'm filming Florence in action in a little crystal shop in Camden. There's a big nervousness in the air. Everyone is wondering, will the spirits actually show up? Hello, hi everybody, hi. Thank you for all coming out tonight and welcome, hey. Um, I'm Florence King and I'm the spooky lady, so. <laughs> OK, I'm just trying very hard to be precise, but they've all come in together and I've got a person that passed through a hanging, I've got to say. Does that mean anything to you? Like, if he was here now, he might be diagnosed with, like, um, almost like a bipolar, you know? It almost... I don't mean to upset you for life, me, darling, but it all, he said there was things happening to him way beyond his control. You, are you his little sis? Oh, you're only little anyway, but are you... I was 12, he was 14. He was... Oh, so you're younger, cos he feels he's got the right to tell you what to do, OK? But he <laughs> says you didn't listen when I was here, you probably won't listen now, you know? 14? I thought he was a bit older than that. That's terrible, so young. <laughs> If you can tell Mum, Dad, all the relevant family, he's sorry about who found him, he's sorry about all the events that led up to that, and, you know, to him it was inside, you know, and it was something that he just felt the world would be better without him. I was concerned about the effect Florence was having on Emma. Was she really connecting with the spirit of her dead brother? Or was she just very good at bringing up past traumas and making people cry? I wasn't sure. But soon I found out that Florence had suffered her own losses too. When I lost my partner, it was a car accident. He was 25 years old and he was the strongest man I ever knew in my life. And to be, you know, to be taken from this world in a car accident was just unfathomable. So every morning, you know, I'd get up because I had this beautiful child and I knew that he wouldn't have any memories of his father, so I knew that I had to be mother and father for him. I'm someone that likes to share things with people and then it's like, well, who do I share with when no-one's here? But just a phone call to say, look, are you OK? Or, um, you know, it's probably four months since your mum passed away. It's, you know, Christmas is coming up. How are you coping? Or something. Just things like that just help. And until people go through things themselves, they don't understand what you've gone through at times. I'm following Florence to the Mind Body Spirit Festival, Australia's biggest New Age event. Thousands are pouring through the doors seeking spiritual encounters of any kind. The choice is overwhelming, but by far the most popular acts are the psychics. I'm about to jump into a new lease of life, a new... Everything's there. Yeah, you've got a knife here, so you might feel that coming out. Is there a pregnancy? Not that I'm aware of. Is there one coming up? Just spray a few little squirts of this chakra spray. Is someone trying to get pregnant? We are safe, we are protected, and we're unconditionally loved. As I wander around the stalls, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Aura photographers, energetic healers, oils infused with angel messages. I had no idea there was so much money to be made from this stuff. I think we get written off so easily, psychics and mediums, and people see like that, you know, it's a high paying business. And there's, I guess there's that factor in any business where people will try to, you know, con or milk money. 
This is Florence's first time on the big stage at the Mind Body Spirit Festival. And while she's eager to impress, the crowd seemed tougher than usual. I feel like I'm looking at a dead figure, but I feel like I'm so sick in the tummy region. It's either a bowel cancer or a cancer that moved pretty quickly. Can I go towards the back of the room there and anybody understand all of those things? I've, it seems to be a father figure and it's a cancer connection. Now, if you don't want to be on camera, you can still take the reading. So does anybody understand towards the back of the room? One, two. Can I go to the third row from the back? One, two, three. Does it mean anything in that row? No? No? I can see Florence as having a bad day and stage performances can really take it out of you. But the exposure is important for her newest venture, her very own psychic school. You'll be great. I've always had these like feelings and premonitions. I'd think something, I'd dream something, and then it happens. And I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a little bit crazy. But um, turns out I'm not. <laughs> I thought <five>. yeah. <laughs> We're not nut jobs. We're not crazy. It's not a schizophrenic thing. But I haven't heard from Brenda or Julie. Um, oh, beautiful, thank you, darling. Florence believes that everyone has the ability to be a psychic medium. It's just a matter of learning the skills and techniques from someone who's been doing it a bit longer than you. What we're going to do is we're going to allow spirit to jump into our body. Now, they've done it a thousand times, and even when you were doing those readings there, they were in and out of your body like nobody's business. Now, allow yourself to feel the process. Now, anybody see anything? Look at... Oh, quick, look at Brenda without looking. She's got the third eye looking mm. at you. Look at yeah. it. Look without looking. Look at the... There's three eyes there. That third eye in the middle, I've never seen an eye like that. Look exactly where her eye line is. Look at the nose. There are three eyes there. Yeah, that looks yeah, like one, are. two, three. Yes. Yeah. It's not a, it's I didn't a, really so. know what was going on here, really nice but everyone seemed to be having a great time. I found out there's no official certification in the psychic industry, and soon these students could be spiritually advising their own clients. You know, a lot of people say, oh, maybe they should train 10 years and all that sort of thing. Well, people are going to go out there whether they're trained or not trained. I'd rather see them go out with a little bit of training behind them. Back home, Florence is thrilled about her latest enrolment, her sceptical son, Anthony. I've done some of uh, my mother's classes and, um, yeah, she's she sort of helped me open up the door to spirituality in, in my own life, which... Um, you know, I was a bit cynical about it as well. Um, I remember doing the first lesson with Mum, thinking, thinking this is just a crock of crap. You look at my son and he's like me, passionate. And now, thank goodness, I've taught Anthony how to link in and feel his father and all that sort of thing. On my first ever reading, I got the lady's uh, grandfather in spirit. And part of my reading, I said I couldn't, couldn't feel my legs. And she said, no, 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 no. He, he passed from a heart attack. And I said, oh, OK, well, I'm new at this, so, you know, we'll just leave it at that. And um, she came back after the, after the lunch break in Mum's class and said, well, I didn't even know that just before he passed away, he couldn't walk. And doing your karate, you trained for 20 years doing that, so you knew your back moves backwards. But this stuff is always the unknown. It's like yeah. you're delving into the spirit world and you don't know what's going to come through when you open the door. I'd love to go professional, but it's just so hard with having a, a regular job for me. Um, I'm doing, you know, 60 hours plus a week driving a truck and I need to try and get down to, to find out some time to be a psychic. So the last thing I want to do is talk to spooky people. So. Another person Florence brings through for Danielle is her close friend Gary, who died very suddenly. When Gary died, I kind of felt lost. Um, it just didn't know what to do. I felt like... I was in this dark space for a while because it's like, well, why am I here? He didn't live here. He always popped in because he's out here as a family, but they just had a bond. That's why she's sitting where the lounge is at the moment. But the last visit he came over, she stopped and just sniffed him and thought, yep, yeah, that's my last visit. She knew it was his last visit. She knew that he had a leg infection and it wasn't going to get better. He died of cancer at the end. He's the first male figure that I could trust, that I knew wouldn't take advantage of me, that I knew that would be look after me or watch out for me. We loved each other. 
but I, I love a lot of my friends that are close to. I always love my friends. It's not many of them that I say that to. When somebody dies and you have a funeral, then what? Nobody's there after the funeral to help you and comfort you and just talk to you about those memories. I'm good. Yourself? Good, good, good. Nice to see you. <laughs> so, um, before anything, did Gary like to fish? He did. Yeah, yeah oh, OK. He did. He's been showing me all weekend. Apparently there's a good swirl or some, some, um, something up the entrance. Or what's the entrance of the Gosford got to do with anything? Oh, he used to go fishing with a couple of mates. Beautiful. He said he's been coming in dreams a little bit, you know. He says he's been giving you um, a lot of messages, a lot of things in dreams. He said, and that's him, you know. So um, he says they're not making sense, but don't worry. It's, some of them I don't remember him. when I wake up. I either. thought so. And he says, he says some of them don't even make sense, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and he says he loves, you know. He sometimes just... you need somebody to lean on, and sometimes when nobody's to lean on, you lean on the spirit world a lot more. And that's what I do. So, um, she's Gives like, him a good oh, bit of guidance and support to well, get through the next like day and the next day. And all that sort of oh, we have to done, and I want to have a coffee when. and just have a talk. That's Sorry. what I mean. I just missed that. I know that interaction. I know for sure. I, I don't know when, but you tell me oh, when, look, and I'll take know, a day look, off work if you want. Every second weekend, I'm up at Tamworth now, but I'm telling you, I will get there. You know, so believe me. With her solo show drawing closer. Florence is seizing the opportunity to get back on stage. She's travelled to Port Kembla to participate in a group show. Hello, testing, one, two, three. Excellent, I'm good. <laughs> Tonight, she's the headline psychic, and everyone who's bought a ticket is hungrily awaiting their connection with the spirit world. I don't know how Mum or, or anyone has the courage to step up on stage and say, you have a deceased grandparent and her name is Sally. I mean, it, the idea of that's just completely daunting to me. Smile like I'm not nervous. Now, can I come to you? Who is the man that's had this heart-related passing? My husband. Oh, your husband, I beg your pardon. Now, he's been with me and he's very pushy, you know, so <laughs> you understand his nature. Yes. All the way down, he's been giving me pains and I'd go, sir, I got it. And then he'd give it to me again. I'd go, sir, I got it the first time. Then he'd give me another pain, just to be sure. But the thing is, having said all of that, and, and I'm not um, minimalising, you know, the, the, your loss, but he's, he's a character. You yes. know? And I didn't expect you to say husband. I expected you to say somebody a little bit older. He is older two. than me. He's 14 years older than me. That I'm a bit happier with, OK? Um, and he said he never got a good chance to say goodbye. You understand? And, the, and he's sorry about, you know, not being able to grow old with you. But he'll be by his side. I've got one in spirit. I've been widowed for 26 years, and he comes in every day. But I always yeah. feel he's been with me, oh, always. absolutely. He gives you butterfly kisses too, so you, you'll feel sometimes, you know, weird things on your cheek. But the thing is, I wouldn't expect you'll ever love anyone like you love Oh, him. I you know, know I mean? I'd never love anyone like exactly. I loved him. Exactly, but there'll be another love, you know, but you'll get there. But as I said, he's not giving me a heads up, he's still a bit jealous. <laughs> he was very, very, very jealous. Yes. Very jealous. The thing, he said he, he was very protective years. over her. Yeah. Very yeah. protective. I take my hat off to you because not only have you gone through all this, but you're going through that, you're trying to be strong for the kids and you're the one left to pick up all the pieces, I guess, aren't you? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And now when I fast forward, my son's 27, so it's been 26 years, the pain hurts like yesterday. And anybody that says time heals or you've got to get on with it is very insensitive because unless you've walked in these shoes, you really don't know how to hit you. Part of my heart was gone and that part of my heart would never, ever replace because he took that with him. My dog Tita died on New Year's Eve. The house seems bigger, even though it's not. It's emptier. No one greeting you at the door. Or all the little bits that make her her, you know, it's missing. I've got three people in heaven watching over me, because I call her a person even though she's an animal. But at the same time, there's no one here. It's just... 
I just wonder how to go forward, like, you know, just... And I knew this one would be big, so... I said to the, them upstairs, like, as I said to Tito, like, you've got to help me through this because I don't know what to do. Today is the biggest day of the year for Florence King. She's hired out the main auditorium at Ingleburn RSL Club for her very own solo show. Tickets are selling well, but there's still plenty to worry about. If, if we've got 50 people walking in, um, then wait till they're seated. But if, if we go too much into the show time, then we'll go 10 minutes after. Florence isn't the only one getting ready. Her regular clients wouldn't miss this for the world. Anybody who has respect for a loved one wouldn't turn up in shorts and thongs. And it's also showing respect for the person who has the ability to put me in touch with her. I haven't worn this to see Margaret with, although she, she knows about all these suits. She, she rather liked me in blue. Will it be that one? I, I don't know. I don't know. Tissues are behind um, the thing. I don't know if that pink bag will be easier for door stubs. You just can figure that out. Books are all fine. All good. I've got um, tickets to see Florence to show. There you are, sir. You have a lovely night and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'll put lipstick on just before... <sighs> what time is it? Yeah. Um, they've been saying there's a lot of people on it. Anyone you know? There are lots of familiar faces in the crowd. Florence's students, friends and family have all bought tickets. But this seems to be making her nerves even worse. She wasn't really a confident person before she started doing this. And now she's captivating audiences of hundreds. Um, talking to their deceased relatives is just, it's just mind blowing. This is most amazing. I've never get this in a big audience because it takes up too much time, but you've got a little girl standing right on your shoulder. This little girl, is, is it looks to me like the same bloodline. Now, again, but this usually indicates a child that never got to be born to me, either a miscarriage or something of that yes. nature. You yes. understand? Yes. That little girl couldn't be closer to you, and, and that's amazing, you know? So please know that that child's there. The gentleman, the grandfather, Dad's dad, yes. he says he's holding this little girl. Wow. You've got about three people right on you. Do you feel like a... a a heaviness or a cold shiver there it's it's amazing it's quite amazing they laughed and said you're in the pink shirt but he's yes. laughing and of course I don't I'm never ever laugh at mental illness or anything like that but they're laughing at is the most misunderstood thing in society these days. People don't get it. You don't get over grief, and yes, you will change as a person, but if you feel that they're around and if you feel that they're talking to you or you dreamt about them, then you did. 
You know, I've had so many losses myself and I can actually say, yeah, I do understand a little bit of what you're feeling. And no, we're not counsellors or doctors or, um, you know, but we are here and we can help and we can give you something to prove there's something beyond this life. During my time with Florence, I've realised that psychics are filling a spiritual void. Organised religion is no longer at the centre of our lives, yet people still crave answers to the big questions. Why are we here? What happens to us when we die? Love them or hate them, psychics hand us the keys to a world where if only for a few minutes, answers to these questions seem possible. Psychic duo in the whole of Australia. I'm a psychic. Um, I do a bit of uh, speciality in uh, mostly questions. So I sometimes use uh, oracle cards to link in. Um, sometimes I don't need cards, but um, basically it's a lot of spiritual advice too. He's like he's been here for five years. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. 